Hey everyone, it's Kanoj and I'm back with a brand new video and today I wanted to talk about how to work hard intelligently. And the best place to probably start this would be to talk about the debate that kind of goes on between working smart and working hard. So I've kind of summarized it in this quadrant. Now, I don't know how well you can see that on your screen, but essentially we've got on the Y axis, we can see like working smart. So the level of intelligence in work and on the X axis, we've got uh, working hard, so effort. Right. So we split into four quadrants on the top left quadrant. We've got working smart, but not working hard. Uh, we've got on the bottom left quadrant, we've got not working smart and not working hard, which is its own whole host of problems. We've, on the top right quadrant, we've got working smart and working hard. And at the bottom right quadrant, we've got not working smart and working hard. Now, when this debate sort of happens, people most people generally fall into one of two categories they fall into here this cat this bottom right category which is not working smart but just working hard which is stupid uh or the other side of it is working smart but not working hard which is generally just ego driven uh which is also pretty stupid so the reason why this is stupid is well for starters if you are working smart by definition of working smart, you've created a system which is efficient and is repeatable, right? The repeatability is a crucial element of it because if you've got a system in place for doing certain, for doing work and it's not repeatable, then that's not smart because you've put all of this effort into executing on a single task, but after that task is gone, you can no longer execute on the exact same systems that you used to complete the task. So you have to repeat that entire process again, which will probably just take a long time to do. So that's not working smart. So repeatability is a really core comp is, is really a strong component of working smart, in my opinion. And yeah, if you're working smart and you're not, not executing on its repeatability, then that's generally just laziness. Um, and that's just that's just really silly because you're going to get you will simply be out competed by somebody who is able to create a repeatable and, and, and efficient system and executes on it and secondly working work not working smart and just working hard so working aimlessly hard for the sake of working hard is pretty stupid <laughs> it's like why would you do that to yourself there's no point just i mean just so you can have like the badge of honor to say that you work hard like all right <laughs> that, that's also ego driven as well it's, it's they're both ego driven in different domains and they're both pretty stupid and People who generally do one of the other two are completely missing out. Honestly, they're missing out on what you really need to be doing, which is the top right quadrant. Now, I feel like people who don't engage in these arguments will generally try to go for that point anyway. I mean, from what I've seen, the people who actively engage in arguments about working smart and working hard generally are doing one of these two and they're not doing this, uh, which is the top right quadrant, working smart and working hard because people who are doing it, they don't, they're generally not having these debates about it. But I fi figured I'd just mention this anyway, for the sake of putting this, ideally putting this argument to rest. So, so essentially you want to create a repeatable system where you can execute on it and it, and you can work hard by just repeating hours. So things, repeating it, repeating uh, the system and just replacing the task. So if we consider the system to essentially ha be continuously if we if we consider the system to be constant where the only variable changing is the task and you can substitute in different tasks and still execute on the same system hypothetically and you know get the same result then that's ideal right because then that way for example if you have a system that instead of taking three hours to do a task it'll take you one hour to do a task and you execute on that let's say for 10 hours a day that's 10x the work, right? As opposed to executing it one time a day. So instead of taking 10 days to do 10 different tasks, you can do 10 tasks in one day, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to put that whole whole, sis, whole situation to rest because I think the whole debate is very pointless, but I'll move on to the next bit. And that is essentially picking what to work on. So when trying to work hard intelligently, it's less about necessarily the intensity of what you're doing, and it's more about what you're doing specifically, right? It's, it's, it's not even, and you can figure out the meta, meta subjects, like how you, how you should do something after you figure out what you need to do. And picking what you do is very, very crucial. And essentially, 
the best way you can the best way you can you know judge this is using the y combinator matrix right so if we have so this is like a grid essentially i don't i don't think this pen's working very well uh let me try this pen i don't know how well this will come off uh it's pretty faint but it would go anyway i should probably get some new pens but um we'll call this so this column is basically tasks this next column is going to be effort and this final column is going to be impact that is really really looks really faint on the camera so let me try let me try putting this here does that look a bit better it looks relatively the same on camera but we have essentially we have three columns task effort and impact um so let's just say we are going to so we're going to use an example of building out a landing page right so let's say example we build out a landing page um well actually you can, you can put this for any task right but let's say i don't know let's say task would be yeah so let's just say building building a landing page let's say so landing page so i just put lp effort might be medium and impact will probably be pretty high because you want to have you know page viewers uh, that, that can see your site and ideally convert uh, into signed or paid users um let's say another task is hiring that's probably going to be high that's probably going to be a high uh, effort task but the impact is also going to be like crazy high right the let's say something else is like accounting effort is probably going to be high and impact is probably going to be very low really speaking right like you're not doing financial analysis here you're more like just kind of keeping track of the books and stuff and that can be helpful but really speaking impact will probably be low but so essentially the reason why i've drawn out this grid right so you've got task whatever task you have to do effort so high medium or low and impact high medium or low is because you ideally want to pick you ideally want to identify all of the things that you need to do so in the task column and then in the effort section identify how much effort it's going to take right so effort can be a constraint of intensity and uh time taken for the task for example right that could be that that could be a good like that could kind of be a good formula so effort equals intensity times time maybe um you can take a good sense just use your gut feel for this um and just take a rough estimate as to how how much effort you're going to need so is this going to be easy to do is this going to be meet me to do or is this going to be really difficult to do um ideally you want to that the best sort of like situation is to have low effort as much as possible um and then for impact you want to see what's the end result going to make a difference to so for example having a landing page and building that that might take medium effort um but the impact will be really really high right whereas and, and same with hiring right Imp but or hiring might be higher effort but um also high impact but accounting might be high effort and low impact so you ideally want to optimize your time to spend on things that are medium to low effort ideally with the highest impact now there are going to be some things that are high effort and high impact which you have to do and that should also be bucketed into that list um but in terms of prioritization you could probably pick the low effort ones with highest impact and just get them out the way so then you can take more time to spend on the high effort high uh, impact situations and you for for situations where you have um high effort and low impact you either want to delegate that or completely deprioritize that so that way it's out of your it's out of, it's out of your it's out of your bandwidth essentially you're just thinking about the things that are actually generating high impact for medium and low impact try to get rid of them as much as possible or delegate them um especially if it's necessary things like uh doing accounting for example that's like a legally required thing so you would ideally want to try to hire a bookkeeper for example to keep track of all your expenses to maybe make a balance sheet uh income statement uh all of that all of the all of the basic accounting uh things right the gaap stuff 
So you want to outsource that somewhere else. But when it comes to product or hiring and team and stuff, you want to do that yourself. So I just that's one. That's probably the best method, in my opinion, on picking what you choose to work on. Um, the next time, the next thing I want to talk about is budgeting time for specific tasks. So if you've got all of your tasks, how do you prioritize it? I think I've already touched upon that right, relatively briefly, but essentially the way you want to prioritize your tasks to make things easier so you can get more done in less time is pick the tasks which are low effort with high impact and do them. Just get them out of the way. Right, so have a priority, low, low effort, high impact, get them done, then medium effort, uh, high impact, get them done, high effort, high impact, then get that done. Because if you get the low and medium effort things out of the way, then you'll, first of all, you'll get more, you'll get more things got done because generally there's a lot more things that need to be done which are low effort and low to medium effort with high impact. So, you know, you ideally want to focus on that and try to optimize and getting as many of those things done, but also... If you are in the process of deep work, then you can be in a situation where you've gotten the low and the medium things out of the way. So doing, getting, moving on from task to task to task and then moving on to a high, to high priority task is probably easier because you're already in, into the state of work, into the flow of work. So that's how I would recommend going about it. The next thing I would talk about, the next thing I want to talk about is breaking tasks down into smaller tasks so earlier we used the example of you know using a land of building a landing page right so if we just put lp that's very fainted on the camera and it's even fainted on the board but we'll, we'll carry on anyway so if we break that down into its constituent components right what's what does the landing page have so it has a hero right so the main like what when you land on the landing page and you see that like piece of copy and like an image maybe or like maybe even a CTA uh, you generally that's that's the hero aspect um, the next aspect would probably be like the about section the next section after that might be a contact and there's probably going to be a footer and a nav bar as well right so we've put nav and we'll put footer Okay, so you've got so you, you started off with this big task landing page. You've broken it into five components, which is hero, about, contact, nav bar, and footer. Uh, okay, so now what? Can you break? Let's, let, can you break it down even further? So in, for the footer, what would be on there? So maybe links, social media icons. For the nav bar, I mean, let's just pretend it's a static page. So we'll say making sure that you have all of these three links mentioned. For the contact us, what fields are required for your end user to, you know, to fill out so that way you can get in touch with them? So probably their name and email and message. Say so about what copy you want to use, hero. Do you want to have, how, how do you want to style it? Do you want to have like a center piece that space? Uh, do you want to have your text, like your bold text, your main action, main text item? in the center or do you want to have it to the left with an icon next to it things like this basically do you ideally, ideally want to take a really large task that you have to do you want to break it down to a smaller component and then from there try to break it down to even smaller components so that way you've got man manageable tasks so say example if you're building this you could say okay what's the first task so instead of saying the task is build a landing page now you've got a task of let's say Decide what social media icons you want to have on your footer and what links you want to have on your footer. Uh, maybe even the design of the footer. Okay, so design the footer. That's a, that's a bigger task. Uh, that's, a, that's a big task. And then you can break that down into links, uh, social media icons, the color of the footer, whatever you want to have on there, essentially. Same with the navbar. You can break all of these down into smaller tasks and break it down to the smallest task possible and just get that out of the way. Because once you, once you break break down all of the tasks you have to do into smaller tasks, like it's much easier to do like ten tiny tasks instead of one big task. Because with the tiny tasks, it's kind of it's not acting as just tasks on your on your to do list, but it's kind of acting as like a roadmap because you know exactly what constituents 
act on your larger task and you can break you can when you when you've taken down all of these smaller components and broken them down even further to actionable m smaller items you can just get these small things done <laughs> and eventually after you've gotten all of these small things done and you've gotten to the next uh, layer of like you know next layer of complexity and you just kind of gone through this, this entire list of tiny tasks you'll eventually get to that end product so that's the huge benefit it's not just that it first of all it takes off the mental bandwidth first of one but it also acts as a roadmap so you know exactly what you need to do what each element looks like in that larger task so that's what i would uh, recommend and the final thing that i want to quickly just have a quick chat about is focus. Okay, so I probably won't need to write down too many, too many things here. But that for when it comes to doing tasks and trying to get focused when doing tasks, there's a lot of there's a lot of these productivity gurus out there. There's a lot of productivity apps, and some of them probably do work, right? Especially if it's for like a standard process that you have to do and you can automate it, then that's that's great. But when I'm talking about like apps, I mean like, you know, certain like timer apps, for example, to try to help you focus. Um, honestly, to focus is pretty simple. It's it, it can be a bit, it's difficult to do, but it's simple in theory. And simple in theory is basically just in order to have focus, you must not have, dis you must not have distraction. It's effectively binary, right? So to be focused, you cannot be distracted. That's basically it. So how do you not get distracted? Put away anything that allows you to be distracted so for example your phone your phone's out there put it away like don't even listen to music when you're doing your work just work in silence so you can allow your mind to think um there was this quote by naval ravikant um, on joe rogan's podcast a while back where he said that one of the biggest like travesties was that man cannot just sit alone in a room for an hour on his own and that's really really true because if you think about it with our phones, you're constantly entertained. You've got social media, you've got YouTube, you've got whatever you've got, right? All of these things are distractions and all of them, all of it is eating away your mental bandwidth. If we think about your, your mind as like a pie, right? Like a pie chart, right? With social media distractions, you can easily eat up between half to 75% of the pie, mentally speaking, because that's just it's just loading onto your bandwidth and it's just eating away small bits at a time. You've got, let's say 10% for Instagram, 10% for Twitter, 20% for, I don't know, poster or Snapchat, whatever, whatever you're using. Um, and all of that eats away at your focus. So if you put away your things, you don't have to completely cut them out of your life entirely, but when you're doing deep work, uh, you ideally want to just have nothing but the task in front of you and the task after that. That you need to complete um something that i find that's really helpful for organizing tasks is using asana um but and using like the calendar i kind of prefer to use like the calendar view uh so i kind of when i'm like when i'm like, planning out what i need to do for the day or the week i kind of just have like all of the things that need to be done and then i can just check them off as i go along so you could definitely try that um or you can just use like notion or something to keep track of your tasks that's that's about the extent of the productivity apps you need most of the productivity gurus will tell you that you need to use all the, a billion and one apps and it's complete horseshit. You don't need to use it. Really speaking, if you're, if you're in a position where you're able to get a lot of things done and you're in a position where you're, you're trying to optimize your performance to like the nth degree, then you're in a good, you're in a pretty good position to be honest with you. Most people are not in that position and these little small little hacks are meta problems for the meta solutions for the deep rooted problem which is that you can't focus and one of the reasons that you probably can't focus and i'll probably make a video about this going into full depth but just the tldr version of it is the reason you probably can't focus is because you're not engaged in the thing that you have to do right because the thing that you have to do is so boring that your brain is trying to find a way to get some sort of dopamine so using your phone and just going okay scroll on instagram that's more entertaining than the task you have to do which might be like writing an essay for example i don't know whatever it is for you um so the way you can make that more fun 
is by trying to actively engage into the work you're doing. So if you are writing an essay, actively engaging in the topic, even if it's a really boring topic, and just trying to get engaged and trying to be creative with, with your writing, that can be enough, right? So that's really about, that's really it for focus. So put away your distractions, understand that your subconscious is trying to, you know, is, is trying to find dopamine. So the way you can do that is to try to just get more engaged in the work you're doing. And yeah, you don't need a billion productivity tools to do work. You just need to avoid being distracted essentially. So quiet space helps. Um, you can listen to music if you absolutely need to, but I think it's probably best if you just work in silence. Uh, you'll be able to think more clearly. Or if you do listen to music, try not to listen to music with lyrics in it because that's never helpful ever. Um, or even if you can listen to the same like instrumental on loop, that can be fine too. But generally speaking, try to avoid listening to music in general. And yeah, that's it. That's that's this the, these these main points. So essentially, if we if we just do a recap, so understanding to how to pick what to work on, how to allocate your time when identifying what to work on, um, breaking down the tasks into smaller tasks, and then being able to and then just understanding how to focus. That's all of those strategies together combined will help you get into that top right quadrant of working smart and working hard and yeah that's it hope you enjoyed uh, if you did please leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment for any future video suggestions thanks